So without further ado, I'd like to very briefly introduce our two guests. Richard Heinberg is Senior Fellow of the Post Carbon Institute and is widely regarded as one of the world's foremost educators about the need to urgently transition away from fossil fuels. He's the author of 11 books, including The Party's Over, The End of Growth, and Snake Oil. He's given hundreds of presentations and media interviews around the world, and his award-winning animations have been viewed by over 1.5 million people. Deborah Rogers is founder of Energy Policy Forum and is recognized as an outspoken expert on the financials and economics of the shale, gas, and oil industry. A former Wall Street investment banker, Deborah has written extensively about the role of investment banks in the shale gas boom. She's spoken widely in communities around the country and has been featured in the New York Times, PBS, MSNBC, NPR, and elsewhere. And with that, I will turn the floor over to you, Richard. Okay, um, my sound's working, you can hear me? Good, okay. Well, um, my book, Snake Oil, uh, makes essentially the argument that um, fracking has changed the American energy conversation over the past uh, few years really the last two, three years, whereas uh, previously it was a conversation about uh, our addiction to fossil fuels and, and how we have to do something about that. We didn't have a very good plan, but even George W. Bush said famously that America is addicted to oil. And this was, you know, he was indicating this is a problem. We got to do something about it. He didn't give us a very good uh, uh, much of a clue as to as to what to do, but it, it, at least there was a general recognition that uh, that this was our task really for the 21st century, one way or another. But uh, the um, the fracking phenomenon has changed that conversation to one of abundance. Suddenly, America is awash in in oil and natural gas. And uh, as a result, um, we really don't need to think very much about uh, our addiction to fossil fuels. That's, in fact, that's, that's almost perceived as a good thing. So I, I want to start with a, a little just sort of general uh, background. I spend the first part of, of uh, snake oil talking about uh, where we are in terms of um, uh, production of uh, fossil fuels, especially oil and gas. This, this is a big deal. Uh, fossil fuels provide 85% of our, our, our total energy, um, virtually all of our transport energy. And transport is, you know, all trade depend, depends on transport uh, in the final analysis. So really our entire economy right now rests on energy and most of that energy is fossil fuels. Now it hasn't always been this way. You know, we, we humans relied on mostly renewable energy resources until quite recently, but there was only so much we could do with those uh, renewable sources of energy. Fossil fuels have given us an extraordinary energy bonanza, and that's it's what's created the, basically the modern uh, consumer economy, uh, the fast-paced world of, of high mobility and, and uh, very high levels of production and consumption. So where are we? Well, in, in terms of oil production, the world reached a kind of plateau back in 2005. Now, a number of us uh, oil analysts uh, had been suggesting that this was going to happen. Um, and and it, it has basically the last eight years, we've seen only 2.5% increase in total crude oil production. Uh, that's not 2.5% per year, which is would be the historic norm. That's 2.5% in eight years. So something fundamental has changed in the oil world. It's not that nobody's looking for oil anymore or trying to produce more. It's not as though you know OPEC got together and just shut down the, the spigot. Uh, exactly the opposite has happened. The industry has doubled its rate of investment in exploration and production. And, uh, and oil prices have gone through the roof, which would incentivize more production, and yet it just ain't happening. And those high oil prices are having a drag effect on U.S. economy. And we, we know this from economic history. Whenever oil prices go high, 
the economy stalls out. And that's basically what's been happening the last five years. It's one of the main reasons that the economy can't get any traction. So the story that the oil and, and gas industry is telling us now that we have this abundance of oil and gas as a result of fracking is news that most people really want to hear. You know, this, this is perceived as really good news. And indeed, U.S. natural gas production is way up to record levels. Uh, U.S. crude oil production hasn't recovered to the peak level of production that we saw back in 1970. But nevertheless, you know, we, we are seeing a very significant uh, increase in production as a result of that, that green area that you see there that says tight. That's, that's, that's uh, production from North Dakota and Texas, uh, what geologists call light tight oil. Uh, produced by fracking and horizontal drilling. Now the claims that the industry is making are really extraordinary. They're saying that we have between 100 and 200 years of cheap natural gas ahead of us as a result of uh, producing uh, shale oil using fracking and horizontal drilling. That the uh, United States is going to exceed the oil production of Saudi Arabia. That we will have energy independence as a result of of uh, these developments. Uh, these claims do not rest on sound data. Um, now I'm I'm going to unpack that for for you for, for the next few minutes. First of all, um, once again, the the bigger picture, any resource ex extraction process proceeds on the basis of the low-hanging fruit principle. We go after the most concentrated, highest quality resource first and leave the nasty, dirty, expensive to produce, more environmentally challenging stuff for later. And that's really what this whole phenomenon is about. It's, it's later. You know, we have extracted the cheap, easy stuff, whether it's oil or gas, and we're going after the unconventional resources that, uh, well, this is, this is a simpler way of, of expressing that pyramid. Uh, uh, but, you know, as you dig down into the pyramid, yeah, it, uh, you find a greater and greater abundance of hydrocarbon molecules, but there's lower and lower uh, energy payback in terms of the amount of energy you have to invest to get those molecules out of the ground and worse and worse environmental consequences. So those who, who point to uh, the abundance of the resource are really telling us that, um, you know, we're going to be able to extract everything that's within that pyramid. The actual fact is, no, it's not, it's not going to happen. The, econ the economics don't work. And that's what we're seeing happen in the uh, in the, the world of uh, shale and fracking. These, of course, are the the plays, as the geologists, geologists call them, the, uh, the formation rock formations in the U.S. Uh, that where where shale gas or tight oil is present. Now it looks like a pretty big extent of of land. Uh, you know, half the continental U.S. is is lit up there in one way or another. Uh, the takeaway here is that in each of these plays, only a very tiny core area is actually productive, uh, is is going to be profitable to drill and and produce at any uh, substantial rate. 